Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us today for the CDEX Forum on Transforming Digital Experiences presented by Dell Technologies. I am Anil Chopra, VP Research and Consulting at Cyber Media Research and your host for today's session. Now, please note that for the duration of this webinar, all participants' lines will be in listen-only mode. You can, however, keep sending us your questions through the chat window, and we will take them up at the end of this webinar. The CDEX Forum is a three-part series that focuses on the C, D, E of organizational transformation. You know, where it's C is uh, CX, customer experience, DX, digital transformation, and EX, employee experience. We've already done CX uh, earlier. So today, our focus is going to be largely around digital transformation, where we're going to be talking about various aspects of accelerating digital transformation to capture new growth opportunities. Now, uh, as we all know, you know, that this current situation that we're in has really been a reality check for, uh, you know, every organization's digital preparedness. And, uh, you know, those who were already at various advanced stages of their digital transformation journey gained a significant uh, competitive advantage uh, over others. And, uh, you know, that's because the, the current situation and crisis has completely changed market dynamics. Uh, it has accelerated digital transformation. It has made it essential uh, to do it, to align with these changes and address a lot of business needs to find, a, you know, find new uh, growth avenues. Uh, so this requires workforce transformation uh, so that you know, employees are more agile and efficient. Um, it requires certain best practices to be followed for the new normal, for, for the growth and all that. So a number of things have to be done. We are going to be discussing some of these things today. And uh, we'll start off first with a keynote on really how do you accelerate the journey to a digital enterprise. And for this, I'm pleased to introduce our distinguished speaker, Jagdish Belwal. Jagdish uh, is a seasoned CIO turned entrepreneur and angel investor. Uh, he's an expert at uh, you know, technology and third business transformations, uh, having successfully done digitization, the digitalization at you know, well-known enterprises like Tata Motors and GE Transportation. Uh, he advises coaches uh, and coaches, CIOs, CEOs, and industry entrepreneurs to solve complex problems and achieve desired results. And with that short intro, I'd like to hand it over to you, Jagdish. Uh, thank you, Anil, for that introduction, and uh, uh, thank you, everyone. I can see almost 100 plus people joining here. Um, and, uh, you know, very distinguished uh, fellow speakers here uh, who are actually, you know, like right in the forefront of uh, fighting the pandemic. Uh, you know, I, I missed the action. I came out of the corporate life just before <laughs> the COVID uh, started. Uh, and of course, that was an anxious time, but I think uh, now we kind of learning to live with it. So let me uh, uh, let me start off. Yeah. Uh, so can you guys see my screen now? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Jagdish. I don't know why I see myself as mute. I'm not mute, right? No, we can no. hear you. Okay, okay, great. Yeah, so, uh, you know, when I looked at the digital enterprise and I, I, think, I think there's enough of Gyan today, uh, you know, in terms of the technology, uh, and various other aspects. And, you know, I have my fellow practitioners uh, here. So I thought of touching on uh, a few things in terms of like them, in terms of what is my, uh, I would say, view on it. And, and coming from, you know, where I come from, which is as an advisor, uh, a transformation advisor, uh, what are those, you know, some of the things that you need to look at uh, beyond technology? So I also, uh, on the similar subject, uh, which is like, you know, making success with technology. I also run my uh, LinkedIn Live every Saturday, 5 p.m., uh, which, which, which touches upon some of the things that I'm going to talk about today uh, in terms of uh, what is it beyond technology that makes it really work and create success. So, uh, so you know, this is, the, uh, this is how the digital enterprise has evolved. 
uh, started, you know, I mean, all the transformations started at an enterprise processes level. And, you know, uh, as Anil said, you know, some of it are at the employee experience level. And uh, then the then it actually went a little ahead and uh, started touching partners. So uh, with the advent of technology, uh, we started connecting our partners, which is our suppliers and dealers on e-commerce uh, uh, platforms or, you know, CRM platforms. And then, uh, and then, and then the organizations started touching customers. Now there have been two versions uh, here. One is you know, enterprises which were directly working with customers, like for example, banks and uh, telecom companies uh, who don't have any intermediaries in between. And and you know they have been at the forefront of uh, digital transformation there, and they have been leading the way for others. I think the road has been tougher for people who have had channel partners and suppliers. Uh, like for example, I worked for 23 years in an automobile company in Tata Motors. Uh, and uh, the moment you bring in additional players or additional layers uh, you know, in the ecosystem between you and your customers, I think uh, it starts getting a little more tougher to, uh, to connect the dots just because of the diversity uh, it introduces in your ecosystem and the fact that these are independent partners. Nevertheless, still, uh, I think uh, uh, these organizations who have worked with channel partners, whether it's in FMCG or automobiles, they've really done a great job in connecting their partners. Now that has given them access to customers uh, where you know a lot of the customer data has started uh, coming to them in real time, which has helped them to make a better sense of customers, markets, product performance, and all of that. Um, uh, in in uh, just yesterday, I uh, sent a small video on LinkedIn about you know uh, about our CRM, which connected the dealers and and made all the customer data real time, and that's the entire industry is doing that today. And so happy to uh, see that impacting the customers. Now beyond customers, uh, again, it's not that you know you only have B two B two C. You can have B two B two B two C. Okay, and then for the layers. Uh, let me give you an example of trucks. Okay, in trucks, uh, an enterprise sells to a dealer, the dealer sells it to a fleet owner, and the fleet owner has a driver who's driving it, okay? Um, and then what happens to this driver's uh, experience with your product? Now, that's what I mean by ecosystem. Then you have spare parts retailers out there, you have got small mechanics and none of them are part of your formal ecosystem, right? And now what you see is in the automobiles is, uh, you know, these uh, aggregators like car deco and all, you know, which require data from the enterprises. So how do you serve them? So that's how it has evolved that, you know, from an enterprise, you connect to partners, to customers and to ecosystem. And that's, that's in my view, a digital enterprise, which, uh, you know, is, touching everyone that its products and services touch. Now, there are two underpinnings of this, uh, the digital enterprise. One is experience, the focus on experience. Oh, it's uh, very simple to understand that, you know, if your employees are not happy, how can they make, make your partners happy? If your partners are not happy, how can they make your uh, customers happy? And so on. So, and uh, the whole... Uh, uh, underpinning of digital transformation is in experience. We see today that the companies who have uh, succeeded with digital transformation with respect to their customers, I think the biggest differentiator would be on experience. In the digital economy, for example, food delivery or e-commerce, there's a constant competition to uh, outdo uh, each other in terms of the experience that you provide to the uh, customer. And it's not just the app experience, it's a holistic experience the returns experience, the support experience and all of that. And I think the second uh, much less uh, cele celebrated or talked about thing is trust. Um, I'm actually working with an overseas automobile company and I have to really work hard with them to uh, you know, sort of give them feedback about their, about their policies or, or their processes or the way they are going about their own digital transformation, wherever it doesn't build additional trust with their partners. So 
um, for example, in an automobile company, uh, if the dealer doesn't trust you, why uh, why will uh, he or she participate in uh, you know whatever you're trying to do with your customers? And uh, it's this it's uh, and and this is now applicable to so many uh, other industries that you know you have uh, everyone is also worried about you know how it is going to impact them. So as you go along in your digital transformation journey, it's very important to create trust. Employees are afraid that they are going to that they they may lose their jobs. Uh, there's enough of you know videos out there which say that hey you know this whole uh, uh, digital transformation is going to impact people like uh, no other place. The partners are uh, uh, afraid that you know you may go directly uh, and sell to your customers. Uh, your customers are scared of their information being misused by you. So I think the trust becomes a very important. Uh, uh, underpinning if you want to have sustainable digital transformation. And I'll repeat sustainable, that means it may it has to outgrow beyond you. So again, you know, yesterday, uh, the video I posted, uh, that system we had done 17 years back, we had gone live on that. And that system still runs, the dealers still talk well about that system because we didn't undercut anyone while we were building that. Uh, and we met everyone's needs. So uh, having said that, the reality is that the elephant is chained, and it's an elephant. Uh, an enterprise is an elephant. It's it's hard to move uh, faster, and it has been chained. So let's look at you know what are some of these chains that, as leaders, we need to break. Okay, I think the first chain is we talked about experience. Uh, what is the root cause of you know where this uh, uh, where where a bad experience comes from? It's actually the the silos, the organization silos. Now think about, again, I can talk confidently about uh, an automobile company. Um, you have a, you have sales, service, spare parts, marketing, and so on. You know, there are different departments, each running their own shop uh, within the enterprise. And each one of them ultimately go and touch the customer. Okay. Now, if you are not able to break these organization silos and look at things from a customer's point of view, uh, then how are you going to address the experience? So, what's where is the where is the answer? The answer is that you know we have to become integrators in connecting these silos to a common cause and bringing them together. I mean, uh, for example, you know, forming uh, you know small uh, councils, cross-functional councils. And, and forcing a common agenda, or you know, sometimes including a, an external, like for example, including a dealer in your uh, you know discussions about 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 how you're going to design your CRM systems, and uh, and that sort of gives you a sanity check. Okay, so focus on experience, break the silos. They are the first chain that you have. The second chain is your technical debt. Okay, um, now. <laughs> this is, uh, I would say, uh, you know, the underbelly of all the enterprises that we all carry uh, obsolete technology with us. Um, and uh, I would say this is also one of the least uh, focused on the least limelighted uh, aspect of digital transformation. So when, when I was planning or strategizing the digital transformation um, in Tata Motors, um, I realized that you know we were on, we were not ready to go on the cloud because we were on Unix, okay. Uh, and think of moving the ent entire enterprise, you know, to Linux. Um, and with, I, I'm talking about eight nine years back with a limited set of technology or alternatives and all. Of course, today I'm happy that you know there's far more options exist to sort of do that kind of transformation. Uh, but we actually uh, bit the bullet and we went to the management and we said, listen, you know, we have to uh, modernize our infrastructure, our data centers. Then we figured out that, you know, there is a, uh, uh, that our SAP is three versions behind and, and look at your entire technology landscape and you see like, you know, minus two, minus three, minus four and all of that. Um, so the, so the, the real hard work in the first three years of, that digital transformation was to modernize the entire enterprise and reduce your technical debt as much as possible. Um, so eventually the world uh, 
you know there are only uh, two types of organizations two types of leaders one who do real solid work solid transformational work and the others who basically gather the limelight i would say if you are on the first side then 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 focus on uh, technical this is technical debt this is the uh, one of the biggest things that can hold back your organization's long term digital transformation i think the third one is architecture uh, this is the this is a very hard one to crack um, because one of the first things first questions i had to really address was like you know, where are my architects okay because they are everywhere and and well i work with you know some of the experts to identify you know who are the best architects how to create a team of architects um and 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 i would say that you know you got to gather your architects together you got to create some sort of architecture governance um some of the cleanups that we did was like you know removing the db links and then you know uh, uh getting proper integration standards in place as many technologies as you put out there that many cross connections will be there and i think these are the cross connections which will really you know uh, reduce your ability to expose you know your enterprise to the outside world in the form of apis uh, because if you can't manage these cross connections if these are not efficient if these are not well governed or well architected you will have a problem so so this is another bedi for you another chain for you i think the next one is partnerships uh, a lot of um, us have a, a a patriarchal approach or a parental approach to partnerships uh you know where you know you will do what i say but you know uh, this is this this is something i also cover in the clarity chat uh, my weekly show that today realistically there is a huge asymmetry of talent between uh, uh, between between the enterprise uh, uh, talent pool versus the talent pool available with products and uh, services organizations i would say about 5% of technical talent is on the enterprise side about 95% of the talent is on the partner side can we reverse this trend i don't think so you can't reverse you can't reverse it uh, the industry the it industry is pretty high margin industry uh, you know the the transformations are very valuable and therefore customers are ready to pay for it you cannot change you cannot have like you know people mass transitioning to enterprise side so therefore we have to change our way of looking at partnerships we have to get into more win win partnerships in a way sometimes i would say if you don't know the subject you know it's like you know empower the partner to uh, create the transformation for you i mean <laughs> i remember one story from my uh, uh, times uh, i was again you know this was when i was doing crm and uh, Uh, we had these uh, databases which were like simply exploding because the dealers were coming by the hordes on the system and i kind of figured out that you know what i mean i can't, i don't see uh, this current architecture of my databases scaling up beyond the next 2 years i actually uh, got oracle directly engaged uh, the advanced customer support and those two guys who came they were the best of dbas but they hadn't like you know sat in front of senior it leaders and they were really scared so i told them i said listen uh, i know what a state my databases are in in terms of the best practices and all you guys work with banks and the large companies i wa i want you to take my databases to the world class level of management and administration day to day administration right and housekeeping how much time will you take <laughs> and the answer came they looked at each other and they said uh, boss uh, we'll do it in 6 months for you so i laughed and i said listen you can't do it in 6 months i know okay i know how large and complex this is so i don't want you to commit something which you can't do i'll give you one year but come next march i want you to present me a benchmarking report in terms of you know how our databases are with respect to let's say banks uh, databases you know which are of course at on steroids 10 15 30 x uh, kind of scale okay so we have to empower the partners we have to take a very different approach to partners uh leveraging the talent that they have and you know the biggest thing trusting them and if you hear some of those clarity chat videos which are there on my youtube channel you will find that 
the the successful CIOs, the successful IT leaders, they trust their partners. They completely keep them informed. You know, they help them de-risk. They help them meet their challenges, and very importantly, they give them the business context which allows them to uh, uh, to stitch their offerings. Uh, the next one is culture. I think this is, you know, where it goes outside of IT. This becomes a leadership team game. Uh, this is where, you know, a CIO works as an influencer. Um, now, I have multicolored pencils because in today's world, we have to, I mean, there's so much of diversity of talent that if you are not getting the multicolors on the table, and if you are not building an, uh, you know, coherent culture, uh, with that kind of thing, I think we will lag behind because there's a war for talent out there. There's a competition for talent out there. And people with the best culture and the best people practices are going to win that talent war. Yeah. So this is, this uh, uh, the, the culture typically forms uh, as collective behaviors of the senior leadership. And this is where I think, you know, we need to go outside of IT uh, function, work with the CEOs and the leaders and identify, you know, what are the culture, I mean, what kind of culture we want to build, which attracts the talent, uh, you know, that we require for transforming the enterprise. And finally, leadership. I think all the parts of an automobile work, uh, you know, in sync. It's that, you know, where you go depends on where, how you steer uh, the vehicle. Um, now, very important as, as CIOs, it's our personal leadership, which is very important, but it's also all the more important to align your leaders. So let me give you an incident. I was, my, my CEO was a German and he was very, very passionate about digital transformation. And, you know, he was like, Jagdish, let's work on it. Uh, and I asked him a question. I said, uh, listen, uh, I, I kind of understand your passion, but is your team ready? And what I meant by is your team means my peer group, all the CXOs and the BU heads and the CHROs and the head of manufacturing and all that, all of that. And he actually went thinking, I said, listen, you can't drive it alone. I said, it's your team who has to drive it. So what do you think we should do to align the entire leadership team? And well, he asked for my ideas, and we designed a leadership offsite. Uh, we worked with a partner, one of the top technology companies. We gave them the mandate that you know we have to sort of uh, educate, align, and uh, you know transform through action uh, the leadership team of the company. So we so we went on a two-day offsite. The day one was you know a lot of gyan about how brick and mortar companies are transforming digitally. This was done because, you know, people thought that, hey, you know what, these are all the new age companies, the services companies, you know, which can do the, which are for whom with digital transformation is more relevant. I'm talking about five years back. Today, <laughs> nobody is, uh, can be absolved from it. And uh, uh, the second day was a design thinking workshop. So imagine top 25 people of India's largest automobile company, coming together in a room where there are no tables, no high chairs, it's only modas and stools. And, you know, standing for most of the day and, you know, just whiteboarding a lot of ideas on, 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 on transforming the company. So you need to do, uh, think about and discuss these kind of interventions which align, upgrade the leadership to, uh, for digital transformation of the enterprise and align them. And at this point, I must say that digital enterprise or digital transformation is not about IT. It's all about business. So uh, everything that we do has to be towards a business value, the KPIs that we are going to impact. And uh, I think everybody talks about it, so I've kind of not kept a slide on it. But the underpinning of whatever you are doing is to create business value. So with that, I end my uh, uh, presentation. Uh, find out where the shackles to your organization are. Not all of them may be applicable to you. And uh, we have to work on them as much as we work on the technology. Um, 
to be successful uh, in creating a digital enterprise. Thank you. Thank you, Jagdish, for uh, that in insightful session. I think uh, I'm sure that uh, the attendees has given, given them some food for thought around their digital transformation plans. Some really good insight from you. Trust is important for a sustainable digital transformation and all, all the chains that have to be broken as leaders. Uh, some very nice way to illustrate, you know, some of the examples that you've given. So thank you for that. Uh, now, uh, for the attendees to gauge your thoughts around uh, digital transformation. Now, before we move to the next session, we're just going to run a quick poll uh, just to gauge your thoughts around digital transformation. So can we have the poll question, please? So what are some of your biggest challenges to ensuring remote productivity? I think uh, remote productivity has been put in our lap forcibly. Uh, we are forced to work from remotely. So what are some of your biggest challenges? Is it collaboration, communication? Is it scheduling due to being in different time zones with teammates? Is it tracking performance? Is it language cultural barriers or providing IT support? So we'll just give you some time. You can choose multiple options. And once that is done, I'll request the admin to display the results once the uh, poll question answers have come in. So if the answers have come, can we see the results please? And then we'll move to the next session. Tracking performance seems to be uh, the biggest uh, challenge, it seems, uh, followed by collaboration and communication. So thanks a lot. I think some good food for thought, and I'm sure that maybe we will get some answers to this because you know the next session uh, is around workforce transformation because any digital transformation is really incomplete unless you know uh, there has been an internal transformation of the organization. And in this session, we're going to see how Dell has actually done it for its massive 100,000 strong workforce. And uh, for this session, I'd like to introduce Pankaj Jassal, who is the director of TMX site services at Dell Digital at Dell IT. Uh, Pankaj uh, leads the team member experience, that is TMX at Dell uh, for India, and he's a strategic contributor for this organization globally. And uh, under his leadership, you know, TMX has uh, delivered many significant uh, workforce transformation initiatives and which have improved team productivity considerably, I believe by 70% or so. And uh, you know, he has successfully moved 99% of uh, Dell's workforce to work from home during the COVID-19 you know, posture in a timely manner. So we'll hear more about what he has to say and maybe he'll address some of the points that came out in the queue. So thanks a lot and over to you, Pankaj. Thank you, Anil. Let me share my screen. My audible and is my screen also visible? Yes. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Anand. And a uh, very uh, insightful session, uh, Jagdish. Really appreciate. And I, I think, uh, uh, you know, what I'll be covering in the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes, uh, uh, it's actually uh, really an extension of what you, what you, you know, uh, mentioned at a macro level and what we have also delivered, you know, uh, within Dell Technologies, right? Uh, so this is, again, our experience of uh, last one and a half year, uh, you know, what we did, how we did, how we are positioning our workforce uh, for the future right so with this i'll uh, start with the uh, you know our vision and the uh, some of the tenant uh, and it has not changed you know whether it is a pandemic or uh, you know before the pandemic it remained the same and that is very important right we want to make sure uh, you know, as a vision uh, is to delight our team members with best in class technology and service excellence allowing them to be their best and do their best work at them, right? So some of the tenant is that, you know, we want to make sure that they are productive, irrespective of the device they are using, wherever they are and whenever they want to, right? We want to make sure they have a right tool set to collaborate efficiently in a flexible manner. And also they get the right support in an easily consumable manner, right? 
so we have to give them those kind of a flexibility as well and uh, just to connect with all to because you know i'm representing dell it uh, so the length and breadth of what we support is also there in in, in the slide just to you know uh, connect that you know what you are going through we internally within dell also have gone through the same challenges as well right so i'm not going to go through uh, these numbers but just to make sure that you know uh, it is important and challenging for us as well to keep the lights on and at the same time build for the future right and that is what you know the transformation is all about and uh, for us the transformation actually began uh, more than a ten, more, around 10 years back right so michael dell has this uh, you know thought process and a vision that we want to give flexibility to our team members to attract and retain talent right so uh, we started a journey about 10 years back with a program what we called connected workplace and then we kept on adding the more and more tool set and flexibility in enriching the experience for our uh, remote workers right and uh, just before the uh, the pandemic you know it's a very healthy number that i want to draw your attention to we found that uh, 65% of our global workforce they have worked remotely at least once in a week right so that has given us a very good data and very good information on the experience part right so jatish also talked about in the experience and trust and all that right so we also uh, you know focus more on the experience and how we can leverage and take it to to the next level and when the the pandemic you know hit on all, all of us in, you know uh, like in india it was more of a 2020 right so in march we actually started uh, the implementation of workforce uh, or work from home uh, policy in that one, right and what we also learned from our previous experience is that there are three important ways that we want to you know bifurcate the experience and work a little bit more on that it's around you know the physical aspect the cultural aspect which is more human and the people aspect and then the technological aspect it is not only technology right we have to make sure like i'm, I'm giving the example in india it's uh, you know we have in my own team members right uh, uh, they were taking calls and sitting for eight nine hours for weeks together on a dining table right or in their bed right you can't ex expect to have those things as part of a ergonomically designed you know work from home experience team. you know so when we're talking about the workforce uh, transformation workplace transformation we have to understand uh, the cultural aspect we have to understand like you know we have uh, 10 mbps connectivity and you know both husband and wife are using that kids are also you know on their online classes and maybe you know parents are watching you know some of the television or ott platform so it is not doable right all of those things are also uh, important to understand and not only technical solution is important when you're talking about workforce work from home kind of a solution right so what we did is uh, uh, this is just a snapshot you know on this slide in the next slide i'll be talking more of you know how and what uh, you know we have uh, you know what we have done like you know like many of you we also had our uh, contact center agent so more than 30000 of them uh, went home right it's not easy how do we make them productive and uh, enable them to to be you know continue to uh, do a tech support for all the customers right we also did around 12000 soft phone uh, enablement we actually uh, on hindsight you know the the, the work what we did uh, just before the pandemic was on the SD WAN deployment, right? It really helped us during the pandemic because some of the investment what we did for the SD WAN, uh, it really helped. You know, when we uh, when we uh, when we look back, uh, it was something you know which was part of a modern infrastructure that we are talking about is a journey, and SD WAN is one of the important factor there as well. So we also increased the deployment and rollout for Workspace One Zoom. You know, we all have seen and uh, you know the microsoft teams and the entire suite of you know office 65 platforms and all we also uh, scaled and improved the vpn you know we have suddenly saw that in a span of couple of days you know uh, uh, from 20 30000 people who used to be there uh, you know suddenly shot up to 90000 100000 you know the concurrent user it was not easy but you know some of the work what we did uh, was really really uh, really phenomenal and business also uh, you know, given us a lot of accolades that, hey, yesterday I was working from office, today I'm working from home, it just worked, right? And that is the beauty of the transformation that, you know, it should just work, right? The technology 
should be at the back end, right? It should not be, you know, it should not be disruptive, right? So, and that is how we were able to deliver as well. And also we have seen the, the use cases for VDI also, you know, increase. Uh, we have to, you know, ramp up the capacity for VDI very quickly. And uh, we, are, we are using VDI for multiple other use cases. You know, we are using VDI for a new hire. We are using VDI for uh, even, uh, you know, the break fix cases as well, right? So all of those things really helped us. Uh, this is again the same slide, you know, how we did uh, globally, you know, with some additional numbers. Uh, but the, the important thing is that, you know, uh, the, all of this thing we were able to do because we have the right tool set. We were working on modernizing our infrastructure, right? So the digital enablement is achieved uh, through the modern infrastructure. And, and our goal uh, is to be able to deploy the modern end user services. And you can only achieve this you know, if you have a modern infrastructure and the underlying network topology in place, right? So Dell IT, you know, we are uh, part of that has been you know, progressing on our IT transformation journey for a few years, right? As we said, uh, the, the transformation is you know, IT transformation, the workforce transformation, the security transformation, and the application transformation. All of those has to has to go you know hand in hand together, and and we have to work on modernizing our data center. We have to adopt a multi cloud uh, you know strategy as well, uh, and we are using this internally, and we are professing that even you know outside. Uh, so those are some of the very important things and uh, in you know talking about. So while it's our top priority to enable the employee and make them productive, uh, and and ensure uh, that they have a good experience. There is a whole ecosystem of the end user devices. You know, we're talking about the application. We had more than 200 plus applications. We have to have the infrastructure and the people, you know, the cultural aspect, network, you know, all those are very, very important. So, uh, you know, towards the data center, we have uh, to answer the question of the network. You know, this is a challenge we at Dell Technology had when we tripled the number of employees working remotely. So having a load balancer in place, uh, making sure that you know the sufficient network infrastructure to handle the massive increase what we have seen how do we do the load balance let's say in india uh, we have certainly a uh, shot of uh, vpn traffic can we leverage uh, apg or can we leverage uh, us or can we leverage you know in, in india you know all those kind of uh, vpn load balancing also was very very important right so that is what uh, we did and again going back to what you know jagdish was talked about partnership, right? So we have to have a trusted partnership with our vendors who really help in a span of one week, two weeks, added a infrastructure, you know, added a increase uh, bandwidth, you know, from two gig to, you know, 10 gig, you know, uh, internet gig, internet bandwidth and all those kinds of stuff. So those are very, very important, right? So for companies who haven't embarked on this journey yet, I think uh, the key learning that they need to understand is uh, they need to have a right infrastructure foundation to deliver the modern service to people at home. A key learning for those moving into the modern workspace, a uh, workforce enablement uh, capability is uh, one of the first thing to do is an assessment of your own current technology footprint. You need to understand if your network and your security posture are fit for the purpose or not. So, and don't, don't make security as an add-on. You know, security has to be embedded in everything what we are doing. And because only when you have those in place, uh, you can truly deliver what we are after, which is one Dell, one experience across the globe, providing the modern frictionless experience that are secure for a team member. So all of these words are very important, right? We have to give them the right experience, right tool set, frictionless experience in a highly secure manner. Okay? So uh, uh, dwelling this little bit more on this thing, you know, as uh, as our IT organization created a digital workplace, uh, you know, we need to simplify the device management and bring all our devices under a single management uh, portfolio, single a single pane of glass is what we're talking about, right? To, to do this, you know, we leverage a Dell Technology Unified Workspace solution, which allows us to provide a single consistent experience to our users uh, on any endpoint device, saving cost also, uh, at the same time, and while we are embedding the security from the edge to the cloud, right? So productivity is very important. We have to make sure we have the right tool set, which are cloud enabled, and we have zero trust in the whole entire process and seamless access, right? So, so we have uh, we have had to modernize our 
own end user computing environment to provide the productivity from anyway to for our IT and the users, right? So we had to unlock ourselves from the legacy uh, corporate environment, you know, by putting our users at the center to allow for a more seamless, flexible, and mobile experience, right? So those are very important. We have to identify, you know, where the users are, how can we extend that kind of an experience with them? So this has been a significant change for us, you know, over the past year. Our initial design point was that we saw most of the devices, uh, you know, on our network earlier, you know, at least once a week or every every two weeks, right? People are, uh, you know, on on the road and all those things. But now it has become a channel, right? So so the modernization of that management has been a key for both the user experience and from a security standpoint. So all those, and we were able to deliver this with the help of a unified workspace. And uh, you know, I'll probably not go too much in detail on on those things, right? Uh, but again, the very important uh, factor here is that how we also deliver this the persona-based uh, strategy for the modern workspace. So we identified that there are people who are anchored, there are people who are hundred percent working from remote. But vast majority, around 80%, 70-80%, or maybe 80-85%, wants to experience the best of both. You know? And we call them mobile or a hybrid, right? So, so we need to identify, okay, what are the job functions and job roles which map into this kind of an experience? And basis that, you know, we we, we came up uh, uh, with the with the solution because the experience has to be at a macro level. Definitely we want to define, but at a at a little bit shade of a micro analysis is also required like for example you know uh, at, a, at at a micro level hey is that user better to have an experience with the headset or with the speakerphone right so that kind of a thing you know we came up with some of the some of the solutioning and all and uh, this is just to give a, a very brief high level idea on how we translated the persona based approach on the uh, people who are anchored, people who are, uh, you know, uh, remote and people who are hybrid. So what should be the experience for the end user we want to give? What should be the device that they should be having? What should be the peripheral they should be having? What should be the memory processor, storage? All those things, you know, uh, make sense for, you know, those kind of a personas. And then uh, also, you know, we want to uh, make sure that how do we actually take it to the next level, right? So depending upon the space that you have in your in your desk, right? Uh, what makes sense? Do you want to have a two monitor? Do you want to have a one monitor? Do you want to have a speaker phone? Do you want to have a Windows Hello uh, embedded as part of a monitor? So we are also looking at you know some of the solutions where how can we simplify the uh, or declutter the desk that I'm sitting on, right? We want to make sure that the monitor itself has a camera built in. It should have a speaker phone built in. It should have a docking station built in, right? So it should be only you know one single cable. The the uh, the mice and the keyboard should be absolutely you know Bluetooth and all that. So you need to have a welcoming desk as well. All those are very very important. Now, saying everything and you know if we do not talk about security, it's not complete, right? And in especially in the last one one and a half year, we have seen uh, the security has taken a many many fold. Uh, um, you know, uh, uh, it has become a business imperative, right? So, so the transition to more, that sorry, the transition to uh, to the more flexible work and the work from home has changed. You know how we uh, we do cybersecurity, right? So it amplifies and presents a scale challenge. You know, for a lot of vulnerability that otherwise were very small issues, right? If, if people were in the office, we used to able to attend to those vulnerability and get those, you know, corrected and taken care of. But now, uh, you know, those things has to be at the edge. So how do we prioritize those things? So we have to have some training. We have to make sure the endpoint security has to have that. We need to make sure how do we manage the insider risk management as well, right? So we actually went on to do some kind of a phishing simulation internally. We want to make sure and uh, educate our team members and uh, you know, make sure that they understand the importance of those things. And the zero trust, you know, we talked about that also uh, briefly, but, you know, this is this is very, very important because if, you know, 90% uh, of your workforce is working remote, how do we ensure that they have, uh, it's a zero trust as, uh, as part of a security, right? So we want to make sure 
it is built into as we are developing the application right we want to make sure the person who's connecting to dell network is he or she using the right device so we challenge on the device level then we challenge on the identity level is he the person who's saying that he is right and then at a transport layer itself we want to make sure that you know the connection is secure uh, and and then we have built the extra layer of security on the apps and the data layer as well now as we are talking about all these things right it is very important to also talk about yet yeah, the things have changed right the workloads have changed we have seen the increase applications are becoming saas enabled right so that means security also has to change right so carbon black along with the workspace one uh, is actually giving us that cloud based uh, security uh, portfolio as well and we are we are working on it we have developed this also and uh, we are piloting that as well uh, so this is our uh, uh, you know what it looks like from the uh, offering you know we want to make sure the team members have uh, uh, is focusing on the experience and the productivity and that should be always connected it has to have the modern collaborative tools and highly secure in a flexible manner and in case they need any help and support absolutely we want to give them contemporary support which is either walking to the office or remotely through uh, either chat based self service phone call and uh, many other ways that we want to uh, Uh, reach out to those those ones right so this is just uh, some of the example of what we are offering for the uh, productivity and the business continuity okay and how we are able to deliver all this thing you know we want to actually uh, capture and we want to listen to what they are saying and uh, that is what you can see you know we were a couple of years earlier when we started a journey it was around 52 and now the experience is 78 and now 80 actually with the latest score and at the same time the cost per headcount uh, uh, also has been so that's it and uh, just you know this is a slide which probably a lot take a you know lot of time but this is just a closing note that like everyone else you know, we also had our fair share of challenges uh, when we had you know moved everyone to home last year uh, i'll probably you know uh, uh, share the slides and uh, uh, we can discuss towards the end when we have the q and a session as well but we have also had our uh, uh, lessons learned like you know scz stpi dot voip soft phone how do we work on that security awareness you know the byod we had our experience on the mobile platform and ultimately what we realized is that we have to continue to focus on workforce transformation and invest in the modern tools network and data center and that is absolutely going to give the right right flexibility and an experience uh, in a easily consumable manner which is uh, required by our team members uh, with that thank you very much uh, uh, back to you uh, anand thanks mankaj for that great session i was seeing the comments people are really really finding the session to be interesting and some really good insights from you in terms of starting with a vision and the fact that you started early on the transformation journey that's very critical that you started about a decade ago and uh, some really good insights have come from you thank you so much uh, before we move to the next session which is our panel discussion we would just run another quick poll so can we please have the poll question so in which of the following areas of technology digitalization has the adoption increased significantly in your organization during the pandemic options are digitization of supply chain digitization of customer channels digitization of employee interactions and automation technologies so once the all is through can we please just quickly see the results thank you so digitization of employee interaction seems to be uh you know uh got increase you know adoption has increased significantly i guess with everyone having to work from home workforce modernization was critical and closely followed by digitization of customer channels so uh automation technology uh, follows up to that so thank you for that um uh, you know it's now time for the panel discussion and uh, you know just to give a brief context before i invite all the panelists on the in the center is that you know this current situation in the pandemic has really really been a reality check for you know every organization 
and uh, you know now i guess based on the two sessions you realize that you know why it's important to really accelerate the digital transformation efforts um how do you really align the organization to these changing market needs and demands which have completely changed what are the challenges involved and what should be some of the digital transformation best practices to follow so we're going to be discussing all of this in today's panel and uh, if we are ready i'll request the admin to bring all the panelists in the center of the screen please so that we can have a discussion are we um, so i'll request the admin to do that thank you so much a uh, quick round of introduction thank you so much uh, to all the panel members for joining us today we have with us uh, vinod shiva ramakrishnan who is the cio at indus towers we have sharad kumar agarwal who is the chief digital and information officer at jk group uh, we have vikas gupta who is the cio at h energy group of companies which is a part of the hiranandani group uh, we have professor dr j s sodhi who is the group cio and senior vp at amity education group and last we have atul govel not last i'm sorry second last atul govel who is the chief transformation uh, officer at india glycols uh, welcome uh, atul and last we have pankaj whom i have just already introduced and you just heard a great presentation by him so uh, welcome uh, all you gentlemen and thank you so much for uh, you know sparing your time to be here to discuss this very important topic i think we've all kind of uh, you know heard some really really great insight from uh, you know jagdish and uh, pankaj so uh, vikas when uh, you know the pandemic was at its peak every organization had to really accelerate the, their digital transformation efforts right i think I, i think that had had to happen but now you know things seem to be coming back gradually things are coming back to normal and all that and they are you know they they are under control so do you think that organizations are now slowing down again or do you think the pace continues what is your view around that uh thank you anil i think uh, i would just say very simply this is a journey now we have started on to a journey it will never end now uh, with the participation which we had earlier the kind of participation that we had earlier uh, without the board rooms and uh, isolations in it as well as in other businesses i think that has gone with the pandemic the focus has changed and uh, the businesses are very very sure that nothing is going to move nothing is going to improvise and the customers can't just really be focused upon without a force without a centrifuge without a force which pulls which are a centrifugal force and that actually is technology so i don't seem uh, to agree with the fact that uh, with times coming to normal back to normal Uh, things are going back uh, to the earlier times i think if we are only heading with the new times and uh, things will start getting if they are moving back they'll start coming back to the old shape so with the technology in place every business every business activity and every department will become very focused and will start adopting technology uh, in uh, in their own ways uh, because you know uh, each business has its own shade so somewhere something is more important and something is less important so that will actually start taking shape okay thanks so so it's a journey as you rightly said and things are going to continue on that journey and uh, don't expect it to slow down it should just go as per the journey as per the plans uh, and you know your views thank you for that uh, sharad maybe you'd like to add something to what vikas said but Uh, you know apart from that i think uh, you know what we'd like to hear from you what are some of the you know key challenges and roadblocks i mean during this time you must have taken a lot of digital initiatives uh, to you know accelerate the digital transformation journey so what were some of the key challenges and you know roadblocks or the bottlenecks that you know you you really faced uh, in in driving some of those initiatives yeah uh, thank you anil ji so actually more a lot has been said by jagdish ji uh, and pankaj in their uh, during their presentations and very informative sessions so i like to touch upon a different aspect which is because the session is about digital digital transformation so how so it's a bit different uh, so to see the concept of digital within organizations digital is a bit different from regular it that we have been doing so the challenge is how to see the uh, the thought of digital in an organization actually it needs a different org structure so because the skills are new as was said by jagdish ji also the talent is 
is different and you would be needing product managers delivery man, uh, managers data scientists analysts solution architects uh, data engineers ui ux designers new tech stack developers a lot of lot of different skill sets that probably will be difficult to have in house one and secondly their working styles their cultural expectations and even their salary expectations won't fit in the regular regular uh, mode of the organization and the way that they are looking at their personal growth is also different so this cultural uh, diversity in the new uh, the new talent requirement is something that helps that has uh, that we as an organization had to first of all agree internally and secondly when i am talking of change management as the jagdeep ji also said we have to align the top management first of all it is i'm not saying it shall always be a top down approach but yes we have to align everyone what digital can bring and very interesting challenge today is because now you are comp- you are comparing your products to the best in the industry suppose we have a data center in house so you like to compare whether it is at a scale with google or any other of the hyper scaler or if you are having a shopping app is it uh, whether is it uh, comparable with amazon or flipkart so these sorts of comparisons are there and uh, another interesting challenge is uh, probably earlier you could say that i will deliver this project in 8 months now you we don't have that liberty of the time to deliver most of the things and uh, experience i am not talking a lot about experience experience is obviously obviously key for any any digital product to be imbibed so having so many challenges aligning them internally externally is is a different ball game together so uh, what we did uh, at jk is we all uh, we almost uh, constituted a new or structure for this setup and had a lot of partner ecosystem uh, helping us achieve achieve uh, what we are trying to do and i'm not talking about the normal challenges the collaboration challenges because i think vikas did a very uh, sorry pankaj did a very brilliant job in explaining them so this is the nirvana state that pankaj is talking about so there can be challenges about cost so the last i would what i would like to tell is that yeah so there have been cost pressures but more important how is how do we showcase the business value that we are going to arrive derive out of that so these these has been some of the challenges and way forwards that we have been working on thank you thank you uh, sharad for uh, the insights i think you've given uh, some really good things on the cultural aspect especially and aligning the leadership uh, you know that is a really must internally as well as externally so i think a direct question from that comes to uh, vinod uh, you know with all these cha- challenges that are really coming in you know uh, it you know actually obviously has become crucial for every you know business uh, you know and uh, and is crucial to you know support the business how has you know this impacted the cio cio's role you know how has it really changed and you know what skill sets are now essential for this role you know i mean uh, first of all then thank you very much and i think uh, so really good to hear some thoughts and particularly you know what we saw in the earlier part was really two different facets of the digital transformation saga with uh, i would say pankaj's story being the benign was when you talk about workforce transformation but when you talk about some of the issues that jagdish brought up i think you're really talking when you say digital transformation it's a disruption it's not meant to be nice you know i'm not getting a new pc because of the pandemic does make you know life necessarily better you know you have to also talk about the performance monitoring that you now do to make sure that the guy is not goofing off for large parts of the day that comes with the turf if you will and i would really you know talk about this that in most management teams there is an equilibrium particularly with the cio as a senior management professional there's an equilibrium in terms of your relationship with the other functions how disruptive are you how much ability do you have to challenge if you will the underpinning of the way functions run and that ranges from a very wide variety of extremes you know from completely technology led which says i'm in an industry so you know uh, the advantage that somebody like pankaj has in terms of being a technologist in a technology industry where everybody gets it if you understand versus you know the guys who are basically order taking 
and kind of doing the things that they're asked to do, particularly in some more traditional manufacturing setups and so on. I think what's happened, Anil, as a result of this is that that equilibrium has shifted. For those CIOs who have been able to pick up the threads, that equilibrium has shifted to a point where we've taken some of those disruptive threads and said, Ki bhai, matlab, now when somebody is asking for digitization, we are asking in a much stronger voice. So what's going to happen because of that? Because as Sharad pointed out, I think one of the interesting things about this pandemic is it's challenged a lot of pre-existing assumptions and you know functions telling you we can never work this way. Yeni yoga ji and 90% of us had teams before we started, you know, the getting into the pandemic. And it was always envisaged, oh, that there'll be 10% usage and that's all right. You know, and now you have CEOs coming back and saying, Show me the stats of how many people are spending how much time online, when did this guy log in and when did he log out? So I think, you know, what's happened is that those threads have come into our hands and to a great extent, I think a CIO needs to be able to pick up those threads and reel in as much as he or she can. Because the opportunity, and that's also the reason why as both, I think, uh, <clears throat> Charad and uh, uh, yeah, the the, the, the thought that this is irreversible is because of that, Anil. So when you say the pandemic is, is passing and, you know, is the balance restoring, not if you have gathered in that thread that you got in the first part of this pandemic. So if you altered the equilibrium, then it's not going back. If you did manage to alter the equilibrium, but you managed to do some things around the surface and look, it's been a good time for IT guys. You got the kudos, you helped your organization survive. It's almost a default. But what did you do with it? How did you gather those strings in your hand? How did you manage your equilibrium? If you were, your control factor was 40%, is it now 60? Is it now 70? What have you done with that power you got for those few days when the whole world was looking at you and saying, you know, I'm Please get me going because I'm at your mercy. And, and I think that is really, you know, so the CIOs, I think, who have gained out of this are those that managed to identify these trends. You know, this has been a huge accelerator. Have you put in those, uh, you know, it's a, an old joke of mine that, you know, if you lay the tracks in a particular way, then the train goes on that only. You know, it may derail, but Largely, you lay the tracks and the train goes that way. So I think the question to us as CIOs, which we ask ourselves is, how did you lay those tracks? What did you do? And depending on what you did at that point, I think is showing what your trajectory is from a digital transformation point of view. I think we've all benefited from, from a credibility boost in terms of that, that importance and that snapshot window that we got where we delivered and where we actually transform the business, but no time to take on the harder things. So, you know, Jigvish talked about the trust part of it. You know, one of the interesting points about digital transformation is somebody will get uncomfortable. You know, that's what the disruptive aspect of transformation is all about. If everybody comes out of the room feeling happy, you haven't transformed much. So I think, you know, some very interesting positional shifts for CIOs. But I think if it calls for some qualities, it calls for confidence, it calls for discretion, it calls for, you know, claiming that space, using that credibility to go somewhere. And not, you know, just purely from a personal point of view, but for the teams as well. So we were doing an integration of a merged company during the pandemic. And I have visibly heard the tone of my team change in these discussions okay. from, you know, Karna ke hai to, you know, if you do it this way, this is a recipe for disaster because and this is how we should do it. And I've seen responses going from, what do you know about it? To, you know, you're making a lot of sense and we should probably do it this way. So that is, I think, uh, in a nutshell, sorry for a very long answer and I'm sure I've blown your time out of the spectrum, but that is where I am. Thanks.
no i think uh, very well explained uh, you know your perspective has been really good i mean if the equilibrium really has shifted then uh, obviously uh, you have to kind of move along with that uh, if it's superficial then obviously you know you have you're, you're back where you were so uh, really good way of illustrating things and you know how cls really need to be able to pick up the threads and all so good good point of view uh, uh, pankaj uh, you know uh, quick question i think you 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 referred to some of it in your presentation but it will be good to if you can touch upon that a little more that you know uh, now you know as as you also explained the current situation has really you know led uh, you had made borderless organizations where you know people can work from anywhere customer interactions have become virtual and all that um, you you talked about modernizing it and all that but it will be good to understand how you know should organizations really align their it infrastructure to support uh, you know their 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 journey for for doing all this oh uh, sure thank you uh, again uh, i'll probably you know uh, i think sharad also mentioned that you know it has to be a top down and leadership uh, buy in but i'll probably take it to a, one more level that you know before we start with any kind of a transformation not only you know the ceo cdo cio and all but we have to have a very much close and Uh, excellent partnership uh, with the facility facilities team with the hr team and the cyber security as well right so it has to be uh, all you know put together right so once we have a buy in from all the top leaders and you know top down approach and a very good partnership with the other support functions and of, of course the partners that we talked about right then we should look start with looking at our workload we need, we need to look at you know what what kind of data we have you know where are the workloads coming uh, is it uh, you know do we have those legacy applications or should we start looking at you know some of those saas applications and and we need to actually move into you know looking at modernizing you know the network and the wan uh, infrastructures so we need to start with some kind of investment on those if you want to position for the future right and st wan is probably one of the answer but that doesn't mean that you know it has to be the only answer right uh, for us st wan uh, definitely helps but you know there are other things which is also very important is you know uh, uh, we need to invest on the modern productivity tools right we need to probably you know move away uh, let's say i can't continue to be on a skype right because microsoft will not support me right so i have to move to uh, teams and you know other wonderful tool like you know the zoom right so zoom has been uh, absolutely a phenomenal one so all those things are uh, absolutely what we need to check you know is going to give us a wonderful productivity for the end user standpoint and the underlying uh, infrastructure to help on that we need to make sure the technology is designed in a consumable manner right like a vpn you know it has to be it has to have a always on or maybe a split tunnel kind of a thing right so you are not backhauling all the traffic uh, which is for the saas application or even the zoom traffic should not should not come to your corporate you know why you should be you know uh, running all those kind of a traffics in your mpls bandwidth it's going to be a uh, uh, cost uh, it's not going to be cost effective that way as well right so you need to have those kind of a thing you need to bring the security towards the edge right it's very very important earlier you know we were in a very safe parameters of the corporates you know but now we have to move the security towards the edge but at the same time we have to have the balance of user experience versus uh, highly secure right i can absolutely lock down everything but then how are people going to be productive right so that balance has to be there so we need to have you know like for example for us in dell you know workspace one definitely helps you know i don't need to be on a vpn you know but workspace one is giving me that kind of a secure and a very easy a uh, consistent access to the business application for what what I need right so all those things and including the provisioning right now uh, delivering a device to someone is a very high touch activity you need to open the laptop image reimage deploy the application software center whatever it is it's a very high touch right how can we do that factory provisioning and deliver directly to someone's home they are not coming to office so why do we have to have the device coming to office and go there from the factory directly ship it there open the box and you're good to go just log in it should be in minutes not in hours right so we are working on that we have a good pilot working on that as well day one productivity right and we have to embrace the hybrid uh, model is what I'll, i'll i'll encourage and also invest in a video culture when i'm talking about a video culture it is not only you know having a zoom it has to have a underlying network which can call all those video packets packets 
it has to have your devices which is capable of all those kind of thing and then you have to have the right culture uh, where you know the video uh, uh, is doable not doable so those are some of my uh, recommendation you know how uh, we can embrace and, and align the it infrastructure for the transformation journey good point thanks uh, pankaj i think uh, video culture is definitely indeed a, a requirement in every organization today uh, with that i'll come to dr sodi um you know because uh, and let me ask you a question a slightly different question that is largely around the education domain because i think a covid has impacted operations in education domain and would like to i would like to know your views around that uh, you know you know because now complete education system you know has been shifted to online mode so you know would like to know how did really amity adopt this remote working and you know to stay productive and uh, you know how will our future world really look like uh in terms of making our students ready to face uh, you know future technological challenges security challenges and so so on so we'd just like to know your views around that yeah good afternoon and thank you so much cmr team anil ji for inviting me i think i am honored to be a part of this esteemed panel uh covid has given an unprecedented impact in fact we all have discussed all panelists have discussed this part in lot of details in fact all companies all countries even have taken a war time measures and we all have witnesses global slowdown across the domains you know even we faced disruptions also but due to this slowdown due to this lockdown uh, you know supply chain has even impacted that has led to changes in processes there is a changes in even operating business models too but you know even then all with all these disruptions thankfully ict infrastructure across the country has worked quite well in fact uh, ict network or internet is the savior for all the industries during this work from home environment and we all were able to do lot of our official responsibilities very easily uh, during this uh, time we also heard a new was word called quarantine but i believe in today's digital world no one is quarantine or no one is in isolation we can be just in physical isolation but we all were connected very much digitally and it infrastructure was a great savior for that in fact digitization today's topic has increased economic productivity it has made more of the world within reach it has allowed everyone to the participate in this global economy you know few years back the way uh, mobile has brought changes in rural sector same similarly i feel that live streaming has made a remarkable innovation in education domain you know one key work which helped us to sail in this pandemic time was the doing best use of technology in form of digital platform we brought 1.75 lakhs students on online platform within 48 hours time of first lockdown in march 2020 we used digital platform for online classes for group meetings for various interactions for guest speakers for webinars you know we conducted around 6000 plus webinars from the renowned speakers from the nobel laureates earlier it was some one international speakers bringing them here physically was not practically possible in this big number but this digital platform has helped us to bring and and you know so they could able to share their experiences with our students and make them you know future ready uh, we even organized youth forum activities uh, you know on this digital platform now main thing uh, here was that as an it team we have done lot of research so instead of just making it a one way you know deliberation we tried to innovate few solutions develop some solutions like uh, we found few tools we integrated with our moodle platform with h5a tool and make it to make it more interactive more collaborative learning which should able to engage more students because what we feel the objective was only one 
to give digital power to our students and teachers so they can do everything at this as this digital platform or they used to do in a physical interaction or even they they should be able to do much more than that yeah thank you uh, dr sodi i think really uh, good remarks and i think i love that remark where you said digital is actually not put us in isolation but actually connected everyone together in a much much better fashion than earlier so we are actually far more connected collaborating more uh, thanks to the entire you know digital infrastructure the internet infrastructure and all and i'm so glad to hear about the initiatives that you have taken at amity to you know make sure that the online education continues i believe amity was one of the first institutes to really have all the students going online and making sure that you know they can they can join online classes so congratulations for that uh you know the all the efforts that you've put in in that um atul i think uh, you know we we heard everyone i i think i would love to hear your views on two aspects one is of course you know you 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 being the chief transformation officer so i think you'll be the best person to really answer this that you know some transformation efforts must have been temporary and meant to simply tide over the crisis but others are meant for the long haul what according to you is really temporary and what's permanent that's one and the second is that you know and and i'm aware of this which is why i'm asking you this question about what you have done at india glycols is that you know a lot of transformation work you have done with the iot uh, at you know at india glycols so tell us about you know this transformation and some of the outcomes so so two questions for you would love to hear your views yeah thanks uh, thanks emr team for having me for uh, in this panel um i think before i respond to these two questions i'll just take a minute to uh, so briefly give my views on we we loosely use the word word digital transformation for any tech interventions which we do okay i think what most companies uh, did at the peak of covid was not exactly a digital transformation initiative but it was more like a survival okay technique no they they had to use some tools to ensure business continuity be it uh, uh, no remote remote collaboration tools or facilitating remote work all of these were the essence of that time it was a mandate you had to do it otherwise transactions would have stopped there was they, you wouldn't be able to conduct business so it was like an imperative at that point of time i i i i refrain calling those interventions as digital transformation those are not okay having said that i think uh, covid one thing covid one positive thing about covid i would say from a digital standpoint is that it has shook and it has actually shaken the 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 gut and the intuition of the uh, most experienced of of them all okay so irrespective of the age because earlier you no know, people who were in business for 20 25 30 years you no know, they always had you no know, we can do this we have been doing it for last 20 years 10 years so all that has gone for a toss so now it's it's actually kind of a reboot okay they have kind of a reset a big reset uh, covid has given and uh, if i talk about the 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 um, interventions which actually define digital transformation if i talk about in within manufacturing it should either result in a reduction in your cost okay uh, maybe in the sense that it should be you should be able to increase profitability directly indirectly or it should create a new revenue stream okay then under that ambit no you can say that no you are doing something to digitally transform the way business conducts its processes and and transaction so uh, as you rightly mentioned so we have uh, taken this journey almost 2 3 years back and luckily for us uh, a couple of our iot platforms which we had deployed that went live and they were available for use during the peak of covid whilst we we had issues uh, around social or physical distancing so to say we we couldn't had uh, people on the shop floor and uh, even for monitoring of the plant during its the stop state you no know, we had to uh, we had to had those uh, remote access of different units different equipments and the inventory 
so that that came in very handy and in fact you no know, we also had these licenses who were not based out of india they are based out of the us they also could could uh, have a view of the plant operations during the startup and guide the the operations for a smoother startup so all that it actually facilitates the uh, running of the the key aspects of operation and you no know, i the bigger notion no i want to clearly highlight is you no know, buying technology buying a piece of hardware or a infra or a application i think it is still not digital transformation okay it 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 is less than half the work done the actual work starts when you start drawing actual business outcomes which are validated either through the balance sheet or through respective business owners so that's the uh, the 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 truth you know that's the the single version of truth i would say so i i that's my limited point so and whatever we did to mitigate the 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 issues which we faced during the pand- the peak of the pandemic that that was critical as i said but now what we have also learned is that there is no looking back okay we need to figure out different ways so that we are able to alleviate the other issues gaps which we faced which we couldn't address it to that uh, to, to that degree or with that effectiveness during that part of time because we never had that time and we had to actually prioritize our focus that no what needs to be done now what can be done later so now is the time to look at those important aspects having addressed the urgent ones i think so that's uh, where we are today and we are now actually actively considering that no how do we further refine our customer connects how do we uh, maybe enable e-commerce for b2b uh, uh, channels as well not just uh, uh, because no one is looking at transformation within the enterprise one is how do you actually have a uh, what uh, these interventions how do we actually connect and collaborate with the outside world your your business partners to so that no it it, it should also be an outside in thing you can't be transforming uh, the the operations uh, f- forever so that's a brief no i just wanted to highlight Uh, on the key initiatives we are uh, taking right now thank you atul i think uh, good view points i think outcome is a must uh, from any tech investment that's a single version of truth as you rightly said and now is probably the time to really prioritize uh, you know what's important and you know uh, look at uh, alleviating any kind of gaps that is what's important now and as now that they are tired the crisis time is past so it's important to look at these things now and um, you know some of the other things about how to you know further refine customer connection all that so good insights from you thank you so much for that um vikas i'm just going to come to you for uh, you know another aspect which is basically around uh, you know uh, we we've all heard all the struggles and everything that you know the pandemic has brought and you know tested the company's you know wits Uh, especially towards improving the asset utilization whether it's manpower or equipment because manpower was really really short and all that so i mean and 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 i believe you also uh, you, your company is into all the lng pipeline layout and all that so i would like to understand from you any learnings you'd like to share around you know how do you re- how do you really enhance the utilization and uh, you know the transformation efforts needed to kind of do that for for all the resources that that you really had assets in terms of manpower and equipment sure i think uh, pandemic really uh, was an eye opener though of course uh, some of these things uh, we had actually started working on a little earlier than the pandemic and especially around uh, setting up of few automated uh, uh, tools to really look into now one of the good things that we had really laid a foundation for and we actually built upon which was uh, upon uh, the remote working remote working and remote monitoring of the to our sites our physical sites now if you look at the project management any project management tool really talks about optimizing the resource utilization optimization of resources now be it the physical resource be it asset utilization be it manpower be it uh, money involved etc and on and, and any any kind of resource the thing is on one side when the pandemic 
was on when pandemic came on and it came on all of a sudden which took us all by a surprise the thing was there was not much left in hand and we had to really koi bhi meeting karna aap kar lo is one mute uh atul sorry okay. sorry 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 uh I think when the when the pandemic started, when the pandemic happened, it did not leave any choice on uh, any kind of resources to really to be optimized because resources really fled. Now we were really left with nothing but to either shut the site or go on something which was more technology oriented. We actually chose the other way around, for which the foundation we had actually let uh, late some time back. We we started adopting the use of artificial intelligence and machine learning in remote sensing by use with remote sensing technology now we had put in few uh, if you if if uh, it's it's no brainer that a lot of our uh, pipelines have a lot of sensors inbuilt for various reasons not only from security perspective but from the threat perspective from uh, seismic perspective from pilferage perspective leakage perspective detection perspective Uh, corrective actions perspective and so on and so forth so what we did was we started utilizing these sensors and deployed few other sensors from a different perspective artificial intelligence really was something which gave us huge amount of leverage which allowed us to leverage these sensors in predictive and uh, corrective measures we actually uh, uh, took not only to uh, uh, to remote uh, surveillance we took up the decision making which was really forecasted using the ai and ml algorithms which gave us a pretty good insight into how the asset really is being utilized now if just a very simple thing if an asset is lying at a particular place or has not shifted its location for more than 4 hours now assets i'm talking about very large jcbs very large uh, movers which are actually taken on rent and which are actually very expensive for on a day to day rental basis now, if these are haven't changed their position coordinates for a few hours it does really give a sensing that this particular asset is being underutilized now imagine over a 500 mile pipeline which is running from one state to other if you get an insight of how many such assets are just lying idle for so many hours and can these assets really be optimized in their usage and utilization how much of roi can be generated by just optimizing on those numbers itself so it's just one of the things that we really look at and the thing is if you start understanding that a piece a 1 km stretch which has not been attended by the number of people that were supposed to be working on that for say 5 days in a week imagine the kind of money that is just getting drained out of the system for no reason so i think a lot of these things gave uh, came uh, came uh, handy by using artificial intelligence and machine learning tools and especially around these pending which left us with no choice but to either shut the site or go uh, digital go uh, go go uh, technologically in a much advanced fashion thanks vikas i think uh, nice use of uh, ai to uh, kind of really you know explain how you kind of utilize the assets and all that uh, we know the um, you know one question to you is uh, you know you explained uh, you know a lot of interesting things about the cio's role but how has the management's perception really toward digital transformation changed how was it or what was it earlier and how is it changed now and you know how are the priorities changed now in the new normal so i mean i can speak obviously from a very personal point of view about my organization but i'll first start with a more general view so one of the things as i mentioned in my previous uh, time when i spoke is that you know a lot of holy cows got demolished in this situation so while i agree with uh, atul that obviously just implementing a tool is in transformation a lot of things that people in their 20 30 years of established business said ki ye aise nahi chal sakta these things got shaken and got shaken severely to the point that a lot of people had no idea of what is next and i think 
you know, in these modes, a typical senior management uh, reaction is to look for solutions. So I believe that what's changed is that people are much more open to the possibilities that the technology brings and how we can put in place something that is way better or that is diametrically better than what was there before. And also some level of tolerance to the pain that a transformation brings because we all went through some pain as part of our transitions in the first place. So, you know, people said we will not survive as an organization and, you know, we all survive. So I think, you know, to a great extent, two things, that is your resistance to change has been uh, eliminated or reduced sharply by the idea that you went through something that was very traumatic and it wasn't as bad as you feared it would be. So the emergence of alternate ways of doing things as well as the shock being kind of questioned. I think the view is really to look at digital transformation a lot more positively, especially if you're not the function that is uh, being impacted suddenly. So for instance, as you're aware, there's always these coalitions that happen in the boardroom. So now suddenly everybody else wants to digitally transform finance Finance was digitally transformed pretty much everyone else. So, you know, there's some very interesting dynamics that have been unleashed by the idea that you have these proof points in your past. Which are now, you you know, you're telling me that all these guys that were roaming around the field, they're not roaming around the field anymore or Firbi Kamchalda. You know, the revenue numbers have not fallen so much. So the pressure on some of the functional leads to reimagine their functions is at an all-time high. CEOs have tasted that to say that it is possible. You know, the market for office space is a very good example of this. You know, if you told your HR or admin people that I couldn't need to give up half the office, you would have had like no end of challenges to it. Now you have a CEO saying, why do we need that? We've proved that you don't need all that to keep getting the revenues. And, and it's becoming increasingly more difficult for functions to answer these questions without coming to me. You know, so I get a steady stream of traffic now saying, let's start talking about what we can do before somebody does it to us. And, uh, you know, so that perspective, I think, Anil, is very important that uh, you're now part of the solution. And, you know, before that you were, to Atul's point, hawking product. Now, now the, the balance is on the other foot. Good point. I think, uh, uh, I mean, now that all the functional heads are actually worried and actually, you know, the CIO's role is no longer just somebody who's supporting the IT business, but actually now a part of it and has to be a part of the solution. So th that, that's an immense change in the overall perception that the management actually has um, in, the, in the new normal. So thanks a lot for that. So uh, we've already uh, overshot the time. So I'm just going to ask one uh, concluding question to everyone. I mean, uh, we're, we're all digital leaders. We've kind of all, uh, you know, led so many initiatives. So uh, any one last line from all of you, one short line in terms of, you know, your learnings, important lessons learned from your journey, and how they've really helped you tide over the current situation. Uh, one short answer on that. I think uh, we can conclude it after that. In case there's any one question, we'll look at that. Uh, but otherwise, we'll conclude after that. So, uh, Pankaj, we'll start with you. Yeah, oh, just one sing single line, probably I'll, I'll only say that uh, uh, trust the journey. Right? And uh, uh, everything that you're working on should be a remote first strategy. So it should be a remote first strategy and trust the journey is what I'll probably say that. Okay. Remote first strategy and trust the journey. Good point. Uh, Atul, what about you? I think uh, we need to uh, think long term and important is to focus on the demographics, the shift in demographics. And when I say demographics, if you see the, the, the new entrants to the job market, the millennials, they want a digital first approach. And if we were to continue our legacy ways, they wouldn't be staying for a week or for, with us. So we'll have to think through and redesign our workplace so that we can keep them interested, engaged and productive. So, and, and the other, other hand, the seniors, 
uh, senior leaders are maybe on the verge of super innovation so we need to capture their uh, knowledge base so that uh, it the the factory or or the the setup or the organization continues to grow so i think demographics uh, as uh, changes have to be factored and for adoption of technology thank you demographics becomes critical dr sodi we can only see the brightness of the star in the darkest night same way we can see some of the really fantastic things happening in organizations in our life in the country in this present crisis time so this is a time to innovate this is a time to collaborate and this is a time to increase capabilities to come out of this difficult time after few years when we will grow more old let's have some good stories to tell about this pandemic time for our grandchildren let's innovate let's die with memories not with dreams thank you i think very very well said uh, innovate and absolutely we should have lots of stories to tell our grandchildren moving forward that yes humne bhi a crisis jhela tha so good thank you uh, vikas i think fortunately or unfortunately we have uh, landed into this current situation but uh, all that we i would say is it is yielding best results best results as compared to last decade last century whatever the journey has to continue but the journey has to continue with in a secure fashion journey has to continue in a secure fashion so absolutely journey must go on uh, work cannot stop and i think uh, that's what we've all learned through this time that work has not stopped we've all innovated and found new ways of doing things so thank you for that journey should not stop and it, it should be secure at the same time thank you uh, vinod so the one line is never waste a good crisis if you can't find one create one <laughs> and digital transformation will be going on and on well okay i don't know how that is going to happen uh, in the future but definitely i think one crisis we have all been through and we surely don't want to see more crisis coming in the future so thank you so much for that but uh, good point is it possible to have uh, you know jagdish uh, on the screen as well uh, admins if it is then we could just have uh, one uh, last point from him and uh, we are then we can conclude uh, can can you hear me yes we can hear you please hey no i was i was listening all through i think really really interesting stories and points i i told you i'm missing my you know action days and i'm actually reliving it through my colleagues here <laughs> so um, yeah i think uh, one is that you know it's all about technology and it's not all about technology so you know you cannot do it without technology but then you know it's uh, so i i have a different phrase for it i call it technology is necessary uh, but not sufficient so i know we heard stories today of uh, you know how how you have to maneuver and how you have to like you know do lots of other things beyond just technology to make it really work thank you yes technology isn't the only uh, thing that it's not just about technology it's a lot more than that so thank you for that um we have overshot our time quite a bit but the good thing is that i've been getting a lot of comments and people are really saying that complimenting us for the insightful session i think it i think it's really been a great insightful session i i i got a lot out of it really great insights from all of you so but i think we don't really have time for q and a so we're just going to conclude the you know today's webinar so thank you so much gentlemen for you know making it such an interactive session you know and sharing your learnings around you know so many digital transformation best practices that you have done thanks to dell for you know enabling this to happen uh, so and to all the participants thank you for listening in so you know patiently all throughout and you know post, post, posting your comments and compliments um i'm sure that you know uh, i mean that's that that's the biggest thing you can give to anybody who is you know speaking in an event that is your compliment so thank you so much um also happy to inform that today's webinar will be available as you know video on demand on cmr's website for you to watch again in the future in case you want to refer to it uh so we will now call it a day today um you know and uh, but before i do that i uh, would request you all to share your feedback on the link posted on your chat windows 
so signing off for now thanks to all for attending thank you to all my you know esteemed panelists and my you know our speakers to 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 come and share your thoughts and inputs stay safe stay healthy and see you again soon goodbye thank you thanks a lot bye bye everyone bye.